now we're into the uh, calculated data portion of the lab. And so the first thing is you're going to have your number of washers listed. You did three of those. It might have been three, nine, 15, or six, 12, 18. So the example I'm using is five. That wasn't anybody's. It's just an example. I also have a example mass for my mass of washers, and I'm saying it's 0 0.0032 kilograms. That's not the actual mass. Please make notes. That's something that you were supposed to mass in the lab setting. So if I wanted to get the total mass, I'm going to take that 0 0.0032 times how many ever washers I have, which happens to be five. So I get 0 0.016. Okay, so I just multiplied those two numbers. To get the weight, W equals M. G. Well, if I have total mass and I want to get total weight, then I'm going to take that and multiply by G. What's G? 9.8. Good. So I get 0.1568. So those three are related. This next column is called period. If I go up to the table up above, I have the average time for a total of 10 oscillations. By definition, the period is the time it takes for one oscillation. So if I have the total time for 10, how am I going to get period? Yes, I'm going to take my total time. Let's say my total time was 6.38. I'm going to take that number divided by 10, and I get 0.638. So that's from your average. All right, the next thing is going to be velocity. Well, velocity, if I go back to the kinematics, is defined as the change in position over the change in time. The change in position about a circle is the circumference. The total time that it takes to travel one time around the circle is the period. You're going to find the circumference up above. You should have already calculated it based on your radius, right? Because circumference equals 2 pi r. And then period is coming from right here. The last column is v squared. Well, if you have velocity, how do you get velocity squared? You just square that column. So that should help you with your calculations.